To get started with the stage plugin for vStitcher, the first thing that we need to do is install the plugin. So you should have received a zip file from the or of the plugin, and I've just saved that to my desktop. I'm just going to right click on it and extract here. So you'll notice it creates this folder called trapdoor.stage3d. Okay. Now once we do that, we're going to need to install it into vStitcher. So go ahead and load up vStitcher, and then we'll install the plugin. So now that I've got vStitcher loaded, I want to load the plugin. So we're going to go up to Edit, Preferences, Plugins, and click this little plus button. And then we're going to look at our desktop, or wherever you installed it, and just click the folder that we extracted. Say Select, and it will install that, and it should say Loaded Successfully. And once I have that loaded successfully, I can just hit OK but this little window comes up it says hey you need to configure your plugin so I'm gonna hit OK there and OK there so now let's configure the plugin so let's go up to plugins stage 3d settings now in this window what we're gonna do is we have a few options that we can uh, set up the first one is including the avatar now this just tells it whether or not I want the avatar to go over to stage with the outfit or not Real-time updates, if you check real-time updates, which I am, it's going to mean that as I change colorways or repose the model or uh, redress the model, uh, it will send that over immediately as soon as it's done. But there's a couple things we need to set up here. We need to set up, tell this where stage is, where to load it from. We need to tell it where to export the temporary models to. And we also need to insert our API key, which gives us permission to do the multiple rendering. So the first thing let's do is let's go get the executable path. So for that, I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to go to my stage shortcut, and I'm going to go to properties, and then copy that target. Go back to vStitcher and just paste it in. The next thing we want to do is choose where we want the export to go to. This can be anywhere. Um, I'm just choosing a folder on my desktop, so I just chose this folder. I'm going to open it up, grab that path, so copy that. And then we go back to vStitcher and paste that in. And the last thing is the API key. Now this is the API key that you received from your enterprise client uh, account, or if you've purchased an API key as a pro or indie user. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Go to my desktop where I have it saved, open it up, copy it, go back to vStitcher, paste it in and then I'm gonna hit save. Now what this does is this API key allows me, once I open up all the render settings, it gives me all of my custom settings from stage inside of the plugin, and you'll see that here in just a second. So I'm gonna close this, and let's load a model into stage. So now that I have the plugin all configured and ready to go, let's send a model over to stage. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Plugins, Stage, and I'm going to say Launch Stage 3D. Now what it's going to do is it's going to load up Stage from the path that you gave it from the EXE. It's going to ask you to authenticate. If you've never done it before, it's going to ask you for your uh, username, which is your email, and your password for your Stage account. You can click on the little box that says Remember Me, and then every time you come in, you won't have to reload it. I already did that, so it's just loading straight in here. And so what it's doing is it's now loaded that right into the scene. And I can click and drag and look at this inside the scene. I can change my HDR scene to a sunrise or a field, an interior, or even something just like white or gray. So now I can come in here and I can do renders, I can change lighting, I can change scenes, I can do whatever I want to. And if you remember, I'm gonna go back over here to stage and go to the plugins and the settings once I open settings, I have real-time updates checked. So that means if I switch my colorway, if I go to this colorway, it's going to start loading that into stage. You'll notice it pushes this data over into stage. So I'm going to go over to stage, click in here, and it's going to sit here for just a second, and then it's going to reload that new colorway into stage. So now I have that new colorway right here in stage. Once again, if I go back to vStitcher and I change the colorway here, it's going to take just a second, and then it reloads that, grabs all that information, exports that data, sends it back over to Sage, and in just a second, I'll have the new colorway over in Stage. There it is. 
So the manual way of doing this is just pushing each one of them one by one. Now I could hit camera preset, go to my front view or my left view, um, etc. And I can make renders from here. I can even go in here and I can say set my uh, go into my settings to my still images and I can set 1500 by 2000 for my render size and then I can say show my still aspect ratio and I could come in here and I could frame it and then I could take a render from there. So I could do that or I can automate this process all inside of vStitcher. So let's close stage and then we'll head back over to vStitcher and I'm going to show you how to do all of this automatically. One thing that you'll want to do before you start doing renders in stage from vStitcher is restart vStitcher after you do your setup. So when I go to set stage settings and I set all of this and I hit save, I'll want to restart vStitcher. That just allows everything to get reset. It now will, when you open it back up, it will know where to look for your, um, for your personal preferences on the server and it will know how to hook everything up. So once you do that, now let's go ahead and let's render everything together. So let's go up to Plugins, Stage 3D. Let's go to Render with Stage. And it's going to load here. And it's going to load all my personal preferences. Um, so it's going to have all my cameras and everything here. But I'm going to choose Image. I don't need Alpha. Um, and I'm going to choose 1500 by 2000. So that's kind of a vertical shot. I want to tell it where to go for this, for the renders. So I'm actually going to go back to my desktop here and I'm going to go to that, this renders folder and copy this. And then I'm going to put it right here. And then I'm just going to leave this as is. Now this just takes the name of the vStitcher file and then puts an underscore and then does the colorway and then the camera um, as kind of the, the naming convention. So I'm just going to leave all this the way it is. I don't need any animations, but I want to do the back, front, right, three quarter and left. And I'm going to choose HDR and I'm going to do, let's do the parking lot for this one. Okay. I don't need any light rigs, but I want to choose all of my colorways. So now that I've done that, I'm going to now hit render. And once it's, once you do this, what it's doing now is it's going to start exporting each colorway to an independent file that it's then going to load into stage. As of right now, there's no direct connection between Stage and vStitcher when it comes to different colorways or things like that. And so the way that it works is for every colorway, it exports a model of that colorway, stores it, and put, makes it ready for rendering inside of Stage. So you'll notice there should be one more model here. It's just loading this last colorway and then getting that sent over into that file folder that you told it for temporary storage. Once we do this, it starts up Stage it loads up all your settings so that it loads up the scene that you wanted. It grabs the cameras that you wanted and it will start rendering. So here it goes authenticating. It opens this up. And once it does this, it's going to start rendering very quickly. So here's back, front, left, right, three quarter. And now it's going to load a new one. So it's going to load the next colorway that it stored and it's going to go right into that. So back, front, left, right, three quarter. Now you can set up as many cameras as you want. And as you set up custom cameras inside of stage, those cameras are then available to you inside of the plugin. So every time you set up a custom camera, you can then render with that directly from vStitcher in stage. You can also do that with light rigs. So as you choose light rigs and create light rigs, you can pick those custom ones from your, um, from your stage plugin. Also, animations work that way too. So as you set up your own custom animations, those are then available to you as well. So now what we'll do is if we go to this folder, we'll notice that we've got a bunch of renders here. And so if you notice, it's named the vStitcher file, then it gives you what colorway it is and then what camera it is. So now if I go through these, here's all my images. And very quickly, you'll notice that was very fast and very simple and easy to just go through those very quickly. And now I have the same consistent image for each of the colorways that I can then use wherever I need to. 
once you're finished, you could go back and do it again. So you could change the resolution um, or you could also change different cameras and it will go through and re-render those for you very rapidly again. 